Are you in a position where you've maximized your tax-free savings account and are looking for other strategies that can allow you to tax shelter additional money in the short and long term while providing the opportunity for future tax-free income along with access to your money if you need it in the short term? Well, during this video, I'm gonna share with you some information on what I call the unlimited tax-free savings account, which is nothing more than the creative use of a joint life and last to die whole life policy utilizing the maximum additional deposit option. Your eyes may have just glossed over, but stay with me. You're gonna be pleasantly surprised and intrigued about what I'm gonna share with you. I'm Rick Golding of the Bay West Group, and for the most insightful information on wealth and risk management strategies for business owners, including doctors and dentists, subscribe to the Goldring Financial Leadership YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell to be notified when we upload new videos. You know, in Canada, there's only really four true tax shelters. Your home, you buy a home for a million dollars, you sell it for two million, as a principal residence, that million dollars is completely tax-free. And tax-free savings accounts are a true tax shelter. The money goes in, grows tax-free, and can be paid out tax-free. But you're limited in how much money you can deposit into a tax-free savings account. Thirdly, we have lottery winnings in Canada. If your 649 numbers come in, um, all that money is completely tax-free. And the fourth tax shelter is life insurance. And most people wouldn't say that, but money goes in and is paid out tax-free. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, but what about RRSPs? Well, RRSPs are a great tax shelter temporarily because the money does grow tax-free and you get tax benefit when you invest in an RRSP, but when the money comes out, it's all taxable. Most people know what life insurance is, but they don't know what it can do, especially while one is alive. Let's take an example of a husband and wife, both age 40, who are non-smokers. They have an extra $10,000 that they can save on a regular basis for the next 20 years in a conservative manner. So they apply for a $244,000 joint life and last to die participating life insurance policy. Now the numbers I'm showing you are based on the current dividend scale for a particular company. And the dividend scale can and does fluctuate both up and down over time. And on other videos, I provide greater detail about how dividends work. Now, the joint life refers to that on the second death, that is when the proceeds or the death benefit or the insurance proceeds are paid out to the estate or beneficiaries. So in the first year, if one of the two dies, there's no payout. But if in the first year, one died and then the second, there would be a payout of $244,000, again, to the estate or beneficiaries that's stated on the policy. Now each year they pay their premium, the death benefit goes up and so does the cash value. By the end of year one, they've deposited $10,000 into the life insurance policy and if they surrender the policy after one year, there would be $8,600. So you wouldn't do it for a short-term basis like a year. At the end of year five, you would have paid $50,000 in the policy at $10,000 a year and the cash value inside the policy would be around $50,000 as well. So after five years, you broke even if you cancel the policy and the death benefit has grown to $411,000 in this example. Now after year 10, the cash value will have grown to $113,000 and the death benefit to $574,000. And after 20 years, at age 60, the cash value in the policy would have grown to $288,000 and the death benefit upon second death has now increased to $875,000. Now at this point in this example, no more premiums or deposits are required. Even though no more premiums are being paid, the death benefit and cash value continue to grow between age 60 to age 70. In fact, it grows as long as the policy is in force. Now the cash between age 60 and 70, the cash value would grow from $288,000 to $435,000 and the death benefit would increase from $875,000 to 945,000, and again, no payments have been made after age 60. Now at this point, you're wondering, how does this help you while you're alive? Well, at age 70, for example, you get assigned the policy to a bank, and the bank would lend you money each and every year, and you never have to pay the loan back or interest until the second one of you died. So you could get a tax-free income using loan income from a bank in retirement, and there would be a residual benefit left for your estate. Assuming an income of $30,000 per year for 20 years, that's $600,000 tax-free until age 90, and the second death occurred at 90, 
After the loan and the interest is paid off, there would be a net estate value of $700,000 for the beneficiaries, for the estate, or potentially some could go to charity and there'd be a significant tax benefit if that happened. However, you don't have to wait until age 70 to take advantage of the values in the policy. At any time, for any purpose, you can borrow up to 90% of the cash value from the policy for any purpose you want. I borrowed on my whole life policies over the years for many different purposes, but primarily for investment purposes. And if you do it for that purpose, for investment purposes, the interest on the loan is completely tax deductible. And despite the fact there's an outstanding loan, the values in the policy continue to grow. You may be asking, can I reduce the amount I'm setting aside each year? Well, this example is structured that $3,500 of the $10,000 annual premium is contractual. And the $6,500 is optional, meaning you could lower the premium to $3,500 one year and increase the premium the next year back to $10,000. And the values will be reflected accordingly. A joint life policy has lower insurance costs than single life policies, making it very attractive to use for the purposes that I've shared with you in this video. If you'd like more information on other strategies, I encourage you to go to my masterclass where I provide much more detail about five very unique strategies that can maximize your retirement income, maximize your estate while minimizing risk and minimizing tax. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And for the most insightful information on wealth and risk management strategies for business owners, including doctors and dentists, subscribe to the Goldring Financial Leadership Channel and hit the notifications bell to be notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching.